overwhelming border states and overburdening cities such as New York and Chicago, and in some cases causing real safety and security concerns. Given that, why should voters trust you to solve this crisis? Because we worked very hard to get a bipartisan agreement that not only changed all of that, it made sure that we are in a situation where you had no circumstance where they could come across the border with the number of border police there are now. We significantly increased the number of asylum officers. Significantly, by the way, the border patrol endorsed me, endorsed my position. In addition to that, we found ourselves in a situation where, when he was president, he was taking, separating babies from their mothers, putting them in cages, making sure they were, and then the families were separated. That's not the right way to go. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happened? I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40% fewer people coming across the border illegally. That's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? Uh, I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, we had the safest border in the history of our country. The board, all he had to do was leave it. All he had to do was leave it. He decided to open up our border, open up our country to people that are from prisons, people that are from mental institutions, insane asylum, terrorists. We have the largest number of terrorists coming into our country right now, all terrorists all over the world, not just in South America, all over the world. They come from the Middle East everywhere. All over the world, they're pouring in. And this guy, just left it open. And he didn't need legislation because I didn't have legislation. I said, close the border. We had the safest border in history. In that final couple of months of my presidency, we had, according to Border Patrol, who is great, and by the way, who endorsed me for president, but I won't say that, but they endorsed me for president. Brandon, just speak to him. But look, we had the safest border in history. Now we have the worst border in history. There's never been anything like it. And people are dying all over the place, including the people that are coming up in Thank caravans. Thank you, President Trump. Uh, President Biden? The only terrorist who's done anything across the border is one who came along and killed three, and his administration, killed an al-Qaeda person, come in and his administration, killed three American soldiers, killed three American soldiers. That's the only terrorist that's there. I'm not saying that no terrorist ever got through, but the idea they're emptying their prisons, we're, we're welcoming these people, that's simply not true. There's no data to support what he said. Once again, he's exaggerating, he's lying. President Trump, um, staying on the topic of immigration, you've said that you're going to carry out, quote, the largest domestic deportation operation in American history, unquote. Does that mean that you will deport every undocumented immigrant in America, including those who have jobs, including those whose spouses are citizens, and including those who have lived here for decades? And if so, how will you do it? Uh, just one second. He said we killed three people. The people we killed are al-Baghdadi and Soleimani the two greatest terrorists, biggest terrorists anywhere in the world, and it had a huge impact on everything, not just border, on everything. He's the one that killed people with the bad water, including hundreds of thousands of people dying and also killing our citizens when they come in. We, ha we are living right now in a rat's nest. They're killing our people in New York, in California, in every state in the union, because we don't have borders anymore. Every state is now a border. And because of his ridiculous, insane, and very stupid policies, people are coming in and they're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen. We call it migrant crime. I call it Biden migrant crime. They're killing our citizens at a level that we've never seen before. And you're reading it like these three incredible young girls over the last few days. One of them, I just spoke to the mother, and they just had the funeral for this girl, 12 years old. This is horrible what's taken place. What's taken place in our country, we're literally an uncivilized country now. He doesn't want it to be. He just doesn't know. He opened the borders. Nobody's ever seen anything like. And we have to get a lot of these people out, or we have to get them out fast, because they're going to destroy our country. Just take a look at where they're living. They're living in luxury hotels in New York City and other places. Our veterans are on the street. They're dying because he doesn't care about our veterans. He doesn't care. He doesn't like the military at all. And he doesn't care about our veterans. Nobody been worse. I had the highest approval rating for veterans taking care of the VA. He has the worst. He's gotten rid of all the things that I approved. Choice that I got through Congress. All of the different things I approved, they abandoned. 
We had by far the highest, and now it's down in less than half because he's done all these great things that we did, and I think he did it just because I approved it, which is crazy. But he has killed so many people at our border by Thank allowing you, all of these people to come in. President and it's Biden, a very sad day in America. President Biden, you have the mic. Every single thing he said is a lie. Every single one. For example, veterans are a hell of a lot better off since I pa passed the PACT Act. One million of them now have insurance and their families have it. Their families have it because what happened, whether it was Agent Orange or burn pits, they're all being covered now. And he opposed, his group opposed that. We're also in a situation where we have great respect for veterans. My, spent, my son spent a year in Iraq living one next to one of those burn pits, came back with stage four glioblastoma. I was recently in, in, in uh, France for D-Day, and I spoke to all about those heroes that died. I went to the World War II cemetery, World War I cemetery he refused to go to. He was standing with his four-star general, and he told me, he said, I don't want to go in there because they're a bunch of losers and suckers. My son was not a loser, was not a sucker. You're the sucker. You're the loser. President Trump. Uh, first of all, that was a made-up quote, suckers and losers. They made it up. It was in a third-rate magazine that's failing, like many of these magazines. Uh, he made that up. He put it in commercials. We've notified him. We had 19 people that said I didn't say it. And think of this. Who would say I'm at a cemetery or I'm talking about our veterans? Because nobody's taken better care. I'm so glad this came up and he brought it up. There's nobody that's taken better care of our soldiers than I have. To think that I would, in front of generals and others, say suckers and losers. We have 19 people that said it was never said by me. It was made up by him, just like Russia, Russia, Russia was made up, just like the 51 intelligence agents are made up, just like the new thing with the 16 economists are talking. It's the same thing. 51 intelligence agents said that the laptop was Russia disinformation. It wasn't. That came from his son, Hunter. It wasn't Russia disinformation. He made up the suckers and losers, so he should apologize to me right now. Yeah, Four-star general standing to your side was on your staff who said you said it, period. That's number one. And number two, the idea, the idea that I have to apologize to you for anything along the line. We've done more for veterans than any president has in American history. American history. And they now are in their family. The only sacred obligation we have as a country is to care for our veterans when they come home and their families and equip them when they go to war. That's what we're doing. That's what the VA is doing now. They're doing more for veterans than ever before in our history. All right. Thank you so much. Let's move to the topic of foreign.